This topic is God's hand is stretched out. I did this based on a conviction uh, regarding some experiences that I had this past week. I'll talk about that a little bit more. In the meantime, please look at the screen or turn in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 22 through 24. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. God is telling people to trust in Jesus Christ. This is in the book of Proverbs. And he wants people to believe him, but he's not going to force anybody to do that. But if you can believe God's word, he will pour out his spirit to those so that they can get his knowledge and counsel. I have commented on this many times in many of the videos that I've published. Um, you know, you'll be able to read places like Job chapter 40 and learn about the king of Babylon and the corruption of the word of God and how in the following chapter uh, the propaganda of corrupt Bibles is disseminated in the world. Or you can read the Song of Solomon and understand how the world lies in deception and is drunk on false Babylonian doctrine. And most importantly, you can receive spiritual things which ultimately lead you to how merciful and loving God is. And I think you get the spiritual knowledge that really drives that point home to the believer, which gives you joy as a Christian. So that's my commentary regarding Proverbs chapter 1. So I'm going to focus on the topic of God stretching out his hand and no man regarded. So why this topic? This past week I read the first 33 chapters out of the book of Isaiah while I was on a flight to the state of Oregon. And uh, I had some interesting experiences, as I usually do on my trip. But I got a conviction as I read out of the book of Isaiah to do this very topic. Uh, I am currently working on several other topics and videos, uh, some of which will be very long uh, and comprehensive by nature. But I wanted to give a rather brief lesson this week on this very important topic. Um, I want to talk about the importance of studying and reading Bibles. Uh, I don't want people to use these videos as their only source of knowledge. It's important that you pause, study your Bibles, pray, study your Bibles independently. Um, it's important to stay in the Word of God to gain the knowledge, the spiritual knowledge that uh, God wants us to have. I'm going to talk about the spiritual vocabulary as it relates to this subject, and I'm going to give some examples in Scripture of God's hand being stretched out and what that means, and then I'll give a brief conclusion. So why this topic? Many sleep and are lost, but appearances can be deceiving. Uh, this past week, I was on a flight out to uh, the state of Oregon, and I sat near a woman on this long flight, and she seemed troubled right from the very beginning when I met her. She was actually sitting in my seat and uh, made some comments to me, and, and I just looked at her, and then she moved to her seat, but she seemed troubled from the very beginning. And she later told me that her chest was hurting. And all this time, I, I know that God puts situations together for a purpose. So I started praying for this woman. I pulled my Bible out. I would have done it anyway. I, didn't, I don't do anything like this for a show at all. But they turned off the lights in the plane, and I have uh, my 1611 Bible on my cell phone, and I've got a little stand. So I set it up on the tray that pops down, and I was able to easily read my Bible and flip through the pages. And I figured if it was 
uh, God's purpose, someone would ask me a question or make a comment. But as I read my Bible, this woman sitting uh, next to me, but there was a, a, an empty seat between us. I was in the aisle. She was by the window. She turned and buried her head in her arms while resting on the window, and she seemed to be in great despair. So I prayed for her to be led to the truth of God's word, and she started weeping and, and making sounds that uh, were concerning. And as we continued the flight, this carried on, and she was very much rushed to get off the plane, but we were sitting near the rear of the plane, so it took a long time to empty. Uh, and I perceived all this time that she might have been involved in witchcraft. As we were exiting the plane, I took a picture of the back of her jacket uh, just to to keep in my memories the uh, the fact that this woman was greatly distressed. It seems like she was not falsely advertising, that she actually is going around advertising that she is a rebel and possibly involved with witchcraft, um, definitely under the power of Satan, having observed her. And, it, you know, there's, to me, very little deception here. Uh, unlike someone that may look pleasant and act nice, but is rotten to the core, now, those are the type of people that distress me the most, the type that come to you as uh, they were nice, Bible-believing people, but inwardly as ravening wolves, so to speak. Those I'm on high alert for. But this person, I don't know their life story, seemed very distressed. So during the flight, I was reading out of the book of Isaiah, and I flipped through and I read out of several other books as well. But one thing that was impressed upon me as I read the Bible is the topic of mercy. And God's hand is stretched out. But who believes this? His hand is stretched out for those ultimately that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this woman is a perfect example of, of someone that if God takes the hardness off her heart and prepares her to receive the truth, could become a zealot for the cause of the gospel. Uh, very much reminds me of a guy named Bill Sneblin that I talk to every once in a while who was a, an active member of the Church of Satan, the visible Church of Satan. He was also a Catholic priest, high-level Mason, 90th degree, I think. And uh, somebody prayed for him, and he wound up becoming a saved Christian. And I, you know, my prayers are that the same would happen for this woman. But it's in God's hands. He's in control. And I just have to trust in his mercy that if it, is his choice if it is uh, his will that he'll open this woman's eyes to the truth of his word. Uh, again, I don't know her background, but certainly she's in need of a savior. She was very much a tormented person, and uh, I would delight in seeing someone like this uh, be able to receive the knowledge of the truth, get saved, and get on track. I'm going to remind everyone, read and study your Bibles. It's important that I can't state enough the importance of an individual having their own unique relationship with Jesus Christ and the importance of reading and studying your Bible so that you can be the best witness that, that God purposes for you. Uh, just a reminder, it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It says in Luke chapter 12, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. And in John chapter 7 it says, So there was division among the people because of him, referring to Jesus Christ. It's a lonely road oftentimes being a Christian. And uh, you are dividing against many professing believers, and you're going to suffer persecution. But as you mature in your faith, what should be happening is you see more and more of God's mercy and the great hope that exists out there for this lost world and how God can use us to get the truth of his word out to people. 
So the meaning of a stretched out hand, I'm going to get back on the topic here. In Proverbs chapter 31, we've got a chapter that's dedicated to telling us about the characteristics of the body of Christ as God describes the body of Christ, the believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, by using an example of a woman, a virtuous woman. Okay, A lot of people that aren't saved, or even those that are saved, but if they have a spirit of slumber, they're going to see only a natural testimony here about characteristics of a virtuous woman and how she's hardworking and looks after her family. But as we read, there's spiritual words that are edifying us about the qualities and characteristics of the body of believers. And one of those is found in verse 20. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yes, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. God is talking about we, the believers, reaching out to those that don't have the truth of Jesus Christ. So uh, the meaning to Christians is that we want to witness to the unsaved and or slumbering people. Even people that are, slave, are, are saved have slumber, almost all of them, as it says in the book of Matthew chapter 25. But if you're interested, please pause the video and go to Exodus chapter 22 and James chapter 1 to read more about this and pray about it. But that's very important that we understand what the hand represents when it's stretched out. We're going to deliver the power of God's word, the testimony of Jesus Christ, to people spiritually. God's doing it using us. He's poured out his spirit to those whom he chooses that have faith and belief in Jesus Christ and uses them to reach the lost people of the world. So that's the big topic today. And uh, there's great news in that. More examples. In Isaiah chapter 5, it says, Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And uh, just a reminder, because of idolatry, because people are believing on a false Christ using these corrupt scriptures. God is furious and angry about that. And he hath stretched forth his hand against them and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. So as I was reading the book of Isaiah, the last part of that verse, but his hand is stretched out still, made a big impression on me of God's mercy. Even though people are idolatrous and and rebel against God and the truth of his word, and they have disbelief sown in their hearts, God, in his great mercy, his hand is stretched out still. This chapter also explains a lot of the Song of Solomon further. God's word can still reach lost, idolatrous people and edify them because of God's mercy. I'm going to repeat that again. That once you get saved, and you're no longer a simple person spiritually, you now are wise because of faith in Jesus Christ, you'll understand these things if God purposes it. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 5 is a very important chapter that explains further what's going on in the Song of Solomon, and you'll be wise knowing that rather than a simple person that can't see anything beyond a simple testimony in the Song of Solomon. You'll, you'll be able to understand what a powerful book of prophecy it is once you receive spiritual things as a saved Christian. Isaiah chapter 9, it says, The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. Uh, spiritually, God is talking about the Babylonians are going to carry away the so-called God's people uh, because of false testimonies and corrupt Bibles. And there's a lot of foolish knowledge that the world has that would carry away would-be believers and, and actual believers that have a spirit of slumber. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Again, the topic of God's mercy made a big impression on me. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, 
neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. So God is going to have to um, reprove Babylon and get rid of these false prophets and witness to his people in order for them to wake up is part of the lesson here. In verse 16, for the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows, for every one is an hypocrite and an evil doer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Again, focusing on God's mercy, that people that have disbelief in their hearts, God is angry about that because of their idolatry, but he's still there. He will forgive people, and his mercy endureth forever. They just simply need to believe the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest. And they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch on the right hand, and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh. And they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. God speaks of an evil and adulterous generation that seeketh after a sign. Uh, and he's going to keep people in a delusion but give everyone an opportunity to believe on the truth if he so chooses. But you have to have the hardness taken off your heart, and you have to be led to the truth for this process to happen. In Isaiah chapter 14, God is rebuking and talking about the king of Babylon, and he's using other spiritual language such as Assyrian, to describe the Babylonian Empire. And he says in verse 25 that I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations that God is going to have to step in and deliver people from the power of Satan, from Lucifer, who the devil that has deceived the whole world. God will do it. He will pour out his spirit and make himself known to his people. It says in John chapter 8, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and we are going to know him. And those of us that are Christians already do, but those that are Christians and are in a spirit of slumber will know the spiritual significance behind his testimony, and they'll be woken up uh, prior to entering into the kingdom of heaven. And those that are not saved, but in a spirit of slumber, uh, many will be given an opportunity to receive the truth. And as it says in the book of Daniel, Many shall be purified and made white. God in his great mercy will deliver people from their captivity under the Babylonian delusion that has been sent. Uh, this is about the prayer and faith for the lost and sick. Uh, Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 8, starting with verse 5, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And I'm going to stop right there and just say that this really gives me comfort because this is how I felt on the plane with a woman next to me who's tormented. And it's, 
I'm just praying for her. It's not a perfect way. Uh, it's not a good environment, in my opinion, for me to start witnessing. It's hard to hear somebody on, on a plane. But I'm praying for this woman. And in verse 7, And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. This gives me comfort because it's a reminder to all of us that if we just have faith and pray for others, that the Lord will heal them, and we trust in Jesus Christ in our hearts, that can go a long way. Uh, I mentioned a guy named Bill Sneblin earlier. Somebody just prayed for him, and he was taken out of the church of Satan. The, the bondage that the king of Babylon had over him was broken. And over time, God uh, used him for great purposes as a Christian, based on the unique spiritual gifts and purposes that was given to Bill. But in this case, I just prayed for the woman, and I'm encouraging everyone listening if you don't know how to witness to somebody, just pray for them sometimes and trust Jesus Christ to heal them if it's God's will. And that's the comfort that I get from reading this passage out of the book of Matthew, that sometimes we just pray for the lost, that they will be healed. And in this case, the centurion had a, uh, a person in his house that was sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And certainly there was a natural truth to that, but there's also a spiritual lesson that symbolizes that that person wasn't saved. And so without physically going there, Jesus heals the sick, and it takes faith, and the centurion is an example for us. So in conclusion, God will free the captives of, captives of Egypt, which is spiritual Babylon, who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I gave a few references there in Scripture of how people are carried into captivity and kept in an unsaved state, but God will destroy the, the works of Satan and, and, and destroy Babylon once and for all. Um, in Isaiah chapter 50 it says, Wherefore when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? God's asking some rhetorical questions about, you know, we shouldn't lack faith. We should trust in Jesus Christ. All things are possible with God. And not as we see it as people in the flesh sometimes, where we see a lack of hope, we despair, we, we give up, we're discouraged. Almost every Christian I know has felt these emotions when they try to do something for the Lord or they try to reach out to someone that they know is not saved or even someone that they think is saved but is in a bad situation and they don't see an instant solution. They can get down and God is always there. That's the reminder. And he will do things in accordance with his will on his timeline that often differs from our own. I mentioned Bill Sneblin earlier. It's not like he woke up the next day and instantly was this great Christian witnessing. It took uh, years for the process after the initial prayer that was said for him to wind up putting Bill on track with effective witnessing. And even the Apostle Paul, it didn't happen overnight. Yes, as it were, scales dropped from his eyes, but he had to be edified by another Christian, and he had to be put on track for the purpose that God wanted for him. It says in Psalm 118, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. God is just telling the Christian community that his mercy endureth forever. So pray for those 
that are lost and pray for those that are being oppressed and trust in Jesus Christ to hear your prayer if you boldly approach it you know God hears your prayer you don't have to keep praying the same thing over and over and over follow whatever conviction the Lord gives you but trust in Jesus Christ to uh, hear your prayer and answer your prayer in accordance with the will of the Father Thank you guys for watching, and I will look forward to a much longer video in the near future.